what the Lord has desired of you, amen, in your institution. We say thank you because it's meaningful to the work and to the kingdom of God. And we celebrate with you and we ask God's richest blessing on all those celebrating any kind of victory in your life right now. That if you're celebrating uh, something that you've overcome, uh, and uh, something that you desire to do and the Lord brought it to pass we celebrate with you and we say congratulations amen and we also want to be sensitive to those who have had uh, had had trouble and and oftentimes there have been people who've had tragedy amen in their midst and and we we say that we're not only celebrating with those who are in good time but we are we're, we're praying with you we are standing with you we're fighting with you as you as you labor amen to obtain victory in your struggle right now whatever it is that's maybe hurting your heart whatever it is that may have touched your life that really has put you in 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 a, in a just put you in a um in a stance of defense right now we want you to know that you're not a team of one that you're a team of many that we will fight with you amen and we will labor in prayer with you and so sickness doesn't have any place among you, amen, because we serve a healer. And if you are bound up and frustrated, we, we want to let you know that, that God is a deliverer and that he will deliver you just like he delivered the Israelites across the Red Sea, that there is a parting of the water in your experience about to happen for you, amen, and we're standing with you for that whatever you're believing god for according to his will we claim it done in the name of jesus will you do that with me would you just claim it done not only for yourself but claim it done for your neighbor claim it done just take a moment right now and say it is done it is finished amen it is accomplished it is a completed that the lord has released it amen we speak favor over you now in the name of jesus we speak favor over over your life we speak favor over your household we speak favor over your children over your grandchildren over your progeny we speak favor over your endeavors right now favor on you at your job favor wherever you work favor now in the name of Jesus those have, who have come against you now in the name of Jesus have to release you because there's favor on your life in the name of Jesus hallelujah no more captive but free in Jesus and whom the son has set free he is free indeed in the name of Jesus heal save deliver sanctify set free made whole prosper in the name of Jesus receive your blessing receive your favor receive your gift right now receive your change right now receive your promotion right now receive your elevation right now receive your healing right now receive God's glory right now come into his presence let us sing together come into his presence let us worship the Lord together come into to his presence let us dance and let us shout the victory you are triumphant now in the name of jesus i declare right now hallelujah it is so that you're a winner you can't lose because winners can't lose and losers can't win hallelujah we give his name glory oh taste and see that the Lord is good. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. Amen. 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 Ah, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Y'all just give me a moment. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I feel like I'm standing in his presence right now. Hallelujah, God. Hallelujah, Lord. Oh, we magnify you, God, and we bless you. God, we praise you. Hallelujah. God, we thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Ah, oh, worthy. Hallelujah. Worthy. Hallelujah. 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 God, we bless you. 
Hallelujah. We adore you right now, Lord God. We lift you, we exalt you, we raise you. Magnificent are you, Lord God. Unfailing in the name of Jesus. I just want to take a moment and pray. Hallelujah. I want to pray for you. Hallelujah. Lord, so as we are in the midst of your presence, Lord God, this is where we desire to be. This is what we work for right now in the name of Jesus. Lord God, it's not working to be saved, but we work in the, in the midst of a praise. Hallelujah. To come stand in your presence. That means the work that we do is that we shout the victory. The work that we do, we stand in your presence. Or sometimes we kneel in your presence. Or sometimes we lay prostrate in your presence. Sometimes we lift hands in your presence. Because in your presence is fullness of joy. And if there's fullness of joy in your presence, it only means that there's victory there. It only means, Lord God, that there's healing there. That there is deliverance there. So we thank you, Lord God. God, we magnify you today. And we say, God, that I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord, where our feet are standing in your presence. And worthy is the lamb that was slain. We bless you today, Lord God. So God, where there's sickness, God, we declare your healing. Where there is, Lord God, discouragement, we declare your encouragement. Lord God, we speak your peace, your power, your protection, your provision. Lord God, your productivity, your purpose, your prosperity over every person. Lord God, that's called by your name right now. That is your son. That is your daughter. Now in the name of Jesus and those who will receive Jesus. We even, Lord God, speak. Lord God, those things into their lives now. God, we speak for someone who is struggling right now to be in your presence, Lord God, to, to sense your realness, to sense your power right now. We declare, Lord God, that you will touch their very situation, Lord God, and make yourself very real. Lord, that they might be standing in the midst of your presence. Hallelujah. And come to the place where we all came to know that you are mighty, that you are real, that you are awesome, and that you are powerful, powerful to save, powerful to heal, and powerful to deliver, powerful to set free, powerful to make whole, powerful to change and transform, powerful to lift up, powerful to encourage, powerful to enlighten. Oh, we bless you. And God, we thank you. I thank you today, Master, for the answer that is in the heart of your worship. Hallelujah. For the answer that is in the heart of your worship. I thank you. And we bless you. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Worthy is the Amen. Lamb. Amen. Worthy is the Lamb. Hallelujah. Worthy is the Lamb. Worthy Worthy is the Lamb. 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 Worthy is the 
Shoes. Hallelujah. God, you're worthy, you're worthy, Lord. 
yes you are lord we give you praise hallelujah to you lord oh we say hallelujah to you lord oh we say hallelujah to you lord oh we say hallelujah to you lord we say
Can we do this for somebody? Say, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Hallelujah. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Can you call his name again? Say, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, 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 Somebody needs to call him right now. Jesus, 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 Somebody in trouble just needs to call out his name now. Jesus. We'll call it out for them right at this moment. Jesus. 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 Somebody call Savior. 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 Somebody needs a heal, a heal, a heal, heal, a heal, a heal. could say I might be dealing with something but I know a name that is above every name that at the name of Jesus every knee shall bow on earth under heaven at the name of Jesus hallelujah My solution is in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. How many folk know that when you're in trouble, the very first thing that we should be programmed to do is call on the name of Jesus. Hallelujah.
Hallelujah. We bless God today and we thank him for the opportunity just to be in his midst one more time. Hallelujah. And, um, and I'm deeply grateful that he allowed us to come together one more time. Amen. That he allowed us to pray together one more time. Hallelujah. He allowed us to sing together one more time. Hallelujah. And we shouldn't take it for granted that when we can come together one more time, I'm always mindful of the missionaries that go out in the field and they don't know if they're going to live to see another day to worship him. We have this strange expectation about us that we're just going to make it no matter what. But there are some people who live under the very threat of death every day of their lives. And when they come together to worship God, they are mindful that we got together. We made it. Somehow, we don't know how he did it, but we just know that he did it. And we've got to become the kind of people that really can get excited about how he allowed us to come together one more time. Would you look at your neighbor right now and say, neighbor, oh neighbor, he allowed us to come together one more time. I'm not going to worry about the next time, but I'm going to take full advantage of this time. Hey! Yeah! Yeah! Jesus. I'm gonna get to the words, but will y'all will y'all walk there with me? One more time, one more time. He allowed us to come together. One more time, one more time. examine his word together if you will turn with me to the book of 1 Corinthians and the 12th chapter 1 Corinthians and the 12th chapter verses 1 through 7 
And they read like this. It says, now concerning spiritual gifts. Brethren, I do not want you to be ignorant. You know that you were Gentiles carried away by these dumb idols. However, you were led. Therefore, I make known to you that no one speaking by the Spirit of God calls Jesus accursed. And no one can say that Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. So there are diversities of gifts, but the same Spirit. There are differences of ministries, but the same Lord. And there are diversities of activities, but it is the same God who works all in all. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to each one for the profit of all. Amen. Praise the Lord for the reading and hearing of his word. I want to talk about something that sounds a little strange right now, but it'll make some sense to you as we move down into the text and examine the text. Loud and wrong. Loud and wrong. You know, it's one thing to be loud. But it's another thing to be loud and wrong. It's one thing to be to make a joyful noise unto the Lord. But it's another thing altogether to be loud and wrong. It's, another, it's one thing to shout the victory. And I like the idea to shout. I, I, in Sunday school, I got myself happy this, this morning because I thought about as we, as we enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. I'm, I'm excited about that because there's power in the midst of his praise. I, I remember, and, and I had to put a comment in there that said that the Jerusalem wall came tumbling down at a shout. So it's all right to shout. I don't get mad with you if you make noise in church. I don't get mad, amen? I remember listening to Jeremiah Wright one time when Jeremiah Wright said that, that he was embarrassed to take his mother different places in, in, in all of these different churches that because he had gained some national acclaim and he had gained some kind of national name, but he said his mama would like to go with him everywhere that he went. And he said, but I was embarrassed to take my mother with me because it didn't matter if we were in an Episcopal church. It didn't matter if we were in a Methodist church. It didn't matter if we were in a quiet environment. It didn't matter if it was worship with the white folks or if it was worship with Hispanic folk. It didn't worry. She didn't worry about what the crowd looked like. She didn't worry about the composition. It didn't matter if they were young or old. He said that if the preacher hit some kind of tune, he said if, if he just mentioned something about the word of Jesus, my mama went to shouting and it didn't matter where she was. She was standing up and shout the victory and she said go on preacher and she didn't matter where she was it didn't matter what 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 could happen it might be around quiet people but mama didn't care about quiet she was shouting and so it's all right to shout but it's another thing to be loud and wrong <laughs> You know, um, I, I, I want to get through this message, but, but the Lord laid something on my heart um, just to share with the congregation. I think that these are the days when authenticity means more than anything in the church. It's, it's always meant integrity. Authenticity is integrity. But, but, but authenticity means so much more in this generation and this time. We used to be able to hide some stuff under the rug. That's what I'm talking about. We used to be able to hide some stuff. Now, I know there's folk looking at me talking about, come on, preacher, don't talk like that. But folk used to hide stuff under the rug. They would just, you know, get there and, and don't mention what it is. But when the Holy Ghost moves you, you need to move. <laughs> Amen. And, and, and the Holy Ghost moved. The Lord brought back someone to my spirit, put something, someone in my spirit. 
And I said, wow, I haven't seen that person in a long time. Hadn't, which means that if I hadn't seen them in a long time and if I hadn't talked to them in a long time, it's been a long season where I haven't seen somebody who is connected to your house and you're a shepherd, you, you don't got no business not now. Maybe, maybe you didn't talk to every single body, but you need to know that somebody talked to them and I didn't know that and so I had to repent, number one to say that, Lord, have mercy, I didn't, didn't think about it like that, Lord. And I, and I, I want to say this, that you got to charge it to our heads and not to our hearts, because if I had my way about it, if I could just make five of me, cause, and, and I don't mean because there's something inherently good about me, it's just I know my heart toward people, and, and, and there is just a limitation of time, and there is failure, there's frailty. The arms of flesh will fail you, but the Holy Ghost won't ever let you down. And so if, you, if, if you're one of those people that's under the sound of my voice right now and, and we haven't contacted you all, this, all through this COVID season, all through this time, it, it don't charge it to our hearts like we don't care. I need to say this because, you know, here's the authenticity, that you can stand up as a preacher and say some things in the pulpit, but if your actions don't match what you say out of your mouth, then some people will look at it and say, he's just proper lying up there instead of talking the truth of God and it impacts the truth and what the truth has power to do in your life and so I, like Paul I won't be too big to say I apologize if we have mistreated you that it's not because we don't like you it's not because that we that, that we look at big eyes and little U's I'm trying to tear that thing down I want that the big eyes and little U's to come down just like the Jericho world wall because there's no such thing as a big eye and a little U Paul said that the, that, that the greatest of the servants is really the least of them. And if Jesus can get down, if Jesus can get down, let me say it one more time. If Jesus can get down and wash the disciples' feet, somebody ought to recognize that. I don't care how much title you have behind your name, that you're nobody compared with what Jesus is. If he can serve, so can every preacher. So can every deacon, so can every trustee, so can every usher, so can every ministry leader, so can every missionary, so can everybody who has a whatever kind of title you wear, whatever it is, God is concerned about his flock. And it's important that we understand that, yes, sometimes we, we, we don't do what we, we run out of time like everybody else runs out of time. And we have to re reprioritize like everybody else has to reprioritize. And I'm, I can tell you this now, if it ain't one, but one thing about me, if the Holy Ghost said move, I move. I don't care what, who's in the way. I might be a nice guy, but if you're in my way and the Holy Ghost tells me to run you down, you about run down. But I just need you to understand that, that that, that, you know, that, that we don't mean, we're, we're moving, we're, we're, we're trying to improve. We want this church to prosper, not just Haskell, because guess what, we, we, we pass Haskell now. Y'all believe me? I'm going to try to get to the message. We passed Haskell. We, the, COVID took care of all that. I don't care first Baptist, second Baptist, third Baptist, fifth Baptist. What, don't matter what kind of Baptist. Don't matter Pentecostal. If you just call by the body of Christ, we got to come together as a community and we've got to serve this body of Christ. There's a kingdom that we've been assigned to build. We've been given different backyards to build it in, but we've got to learn how to build the kingdom. And we got to know that, listen, it's not about what name or what titles attached to, to somebody's heart. It's a about whether or not they know Jesus and are they going to be lifted up out of this frustration when the Lord comes back to receive us. You got to witness to somebody on your job and in your house, in your family, on your, in your travels, in your community. You got to tell somebody about Jesus regardless of their color or their creed or whatever title they might call. It doesn't matter if it's the president. If the president don't know Jesus, then somebody ought to witness to the president. I'm on a soapbox. 1 Corinthians chapter 12. People like power. That's really the whole gist. 
That's why the military is so respected, because the military represents, represents power, authority. We got two times the types of power in the Bible. We got, we got dunamis power. It represents that brawn power. They, have, they got weapons and they have strength. They, they go through boot camp and they, they get physically prepared to go out into places where, 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 where they can survive in the elements and they are physically stronger in a lot of cases than the average person because they may be set in one day in a position to have to defend our, our, uh, our honor and defend our physical persons and so they, they train and they regulate so regulate their minds and they become of what such mindset that they know how to lead in the midst of a crisis that's why military is respected and then they have big weapons that if we were to go to in wartime and not only do you have is one thing if you have big weapons let's see this is a problem in the church that we got big weapons we got bigger weapons than the military has we got big weapons but we don't know how to use the weapons we got but they train, they train on how the use of these weapons and when they upgrade the weapons then they have to upgrade the training so that they can know how to use the big weapons. Power is something that consumes people. But that, that's why officers have power. That's why people in the places of authority have power. And, and I wanna talk about this because it's important, it's very important that we understand that when we look at the book of, uh, of, of 1 Corinthians that Paul was ministering to this church about power abuse. Y'all with me? There was, there was an abuse of power and, and, and interestingly enough um, in, in this chapter in 1 Corinthians 12 we're going to be talking about these spiritual gifts. Hallelujah. And it's, a, it, it, it's, it's interesting about the spiritual gifts because a lot of us misunderstand the, spirit, the use of spiritual gifts. Now, let me, let me say this. First Corinthians, and not, not just first, but first and second Corinthians, these books of Corinthians um, that are, are probably, probably one of my favorite books in the Bible. I, I really have an affinity for the, the books of first and second Corinthians. And why? Because the Corinthian church looks just like the church today. When you go, if you want to talk about relevant, if you want to talk about how, whether the Bible really applies, is it, is it applicable in this culture, read the books of First and Second Corinthians, and you will see that the Bible is fully relevant, that, that what went on before is still going on now. That there's nothing new under the sun, that, that if you want to understand who you are, go back and read these people because the same issues that they had in the book of First and Second Corinthians are the same issues that we deal with in the church. Now, sadly so, you would think that we would learn after a while. That if something that was written so many, 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 many years ago, that, that, that you think that we would get better. But what I've learned in the process is that the more generations of people that you raise up with the same issues and same situations. And that's why I say that one generation can't look up or down on the next because there's someone coming behind you. There was someone in front of you, but somebody in behind you that's going to be dealing with the same struggle that you deal with. This is not new stuff. We got to stop looking at it as if it's something. Something that just cropped up because because guess what what they're dealing with today is something that we had to deal with yesterday if we're just honest about it hallelujah oh I can't get no help in here I see that you know um, we're gonna talk about gifts these spiritual gifts in just you know for just a moment but but the, but the reality is that I've learned is that if we you know if we don't use the gifts that God gave us we can't blame God for lack can I be real with you for a second? You can't blame, you can't blame God for, for lacking your life when God has, let me just make this real plain, God has gifted every one of us. And, and, and it's something that's interesting that we don't necessarily, because we like to promote big I and little you, but that, some, that, that a lot of times we fail at trying to, to, trying to help people to understand what the word really says. But at, when you leave here today, you're going to fully understand something that should revolutionary, that's revolutionary to you and should radically change your life. 
that, that when you leave here today, you, you can't, you, I, you're not going to be able to look at yourself the very same. Because when, when you leave here today, the counsel of the word of God is going to, is going to convict you and is going to touch you in such a place that says, wait a minute, I've got to relook at some things. I've got to reprocess. I've got to reorient. I've got to think through things a little differently than I've been thinking. Maybe the world says one thing, but if God says yet another, then who am I going to believe? Whose report are you going to believe? Is really what it, it, it stems down to. You can't blame God because, you know, for, for your lack if you, don't, if you don't embrace your gift. Hallelujah. We blame God for the lack of faith-filled evidence of his presence on earth. Y'all know what I'm talking about? That there, there are people who would say that I don't know if I see God's hand. But, but if the gifts are in proper operation, folk will see God's hand everywhere. We won't have a choice but to see God in motion if the gifts in the body are in action. We can't blame God for a lack of evangelistic passion and, and fervor to go out and minister and witness the gospel. Folk in the earth realm, if each one would just go out and just reach one, if each one would go out and just teach one, if each one of us would just be committed to say that I'm going to just endeavor to get one soul into the kingdom, you've taken one soul out of the burning fire of hell. And if each one of us would, if each one of them would go reach somebody else, the numbers would multiply and hell would be empty perpetually. But every time that we fail to do that, every time that we make excuses and say that we don't, we don't know how to witness, we don't know, what, know if we want to witness, I ain't saying nothing we're like Jonah, we're saying to, about the Assyrians, we don't want to go there and minister to Nineveh because they're crooks over there. And we want God to curse crooks instead of save them. Y'all talk to me for a minute. But, but, but God can't, you know, I, I say this, and let me say this to you, church, real quick. I'll get it off my chest, and then I can stop yelling up here. But, but, but guess what? God is not obligated to give you his power when you're not doing his work. Hallelujah. We come in and we lift hands and we want the power of God. We want the deliverance of God. We want God to save us. We want God to show up and, 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 and show out in our lives. We want God to, to be the big man in our experience. We want God to do the miraculous. And God is able to do all those things, but God is not in the habit of investing his power in those who don't embrace his gift. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm talking about the gift of salvation. We can't blame God for lack of, of our own sense of purpose in our lives if we, if we have not embraced his gift. Lord, have mercy. 1 Corinthians 12 is part of a sandwich construction. I like those. It's, it's, a, it's a theological term that I originated. Um, I've, I've got this kind of spirit. I was that way in class when I was in... Uh, when, when I was in a um, seminary, one of the things that I was unafraid to do, and, and this wasn't just seminary, this was really just all through school. So I was a quiet spirit, but I was yet a bold spirit. I, you know, I had to learn that. I had, to, I had to think back at that. But I've never been the kind of person who would, you know, I don't like sitting in the back of classrooms, number one, because there's too much distraction. Then you get to see so much of what's going on in front of you that you can't pay attention to what's happening. Uh, at, the, at the front, amen, where the, where the teaching is really happening. Um, but, but, and I was never, you know, I was always one of those kids that everybody would look at and say, oh my gosh, he's got his hand up again. Yeah, I was that kid. I was that kid that, does, does everybody understand this thing? When they said in math class, does everybody understand this? Uh, the teacher would say, does everybody understand this? And everybody, I would look around the class. After a while, it became a habit. I would look around the class and see if anybody else was going to lift up their hands because I know folk don't understand what the teacher just said. I know they don't. How did I know? Because they're going to ask me later, did you understand what, what they were saying. I was saying, well, just lift your hand up and say you don't understand, and maybe I would put my hand up. And then folks go, oh, here we go again. Now the class going to be long, because now the teacher got to go back and explain and explain. And, you know, in seminary, I was the same way. The, the, you know, when the teacher put forth a theological position, I would I'd lift my hand up. 
And it was seen, you know, sometimes it was seen as arrogance. Like, who are you to ask a question? You don't know what you're getting ready to ask. Yes, I do. God put me here. I didn't realize it then, but I, what, what was happening with me was there was a spirit, there was a sense of, of, there was a God sense on the inside of me that could actually participate with those who knew much more than me. Now, I'm not arrogant, I'm not crazy. I know that they know much more and they can help me understand much more, embrace much more, but, but when you say something that does not agree with my spirit, I got to speak up. Hello, somebody, y'all talk back to me and I won't preach as long. I'm not going to sit around and, and just let you say what you want to say and it don't sound right. Most of us will sit around and let folks say what they want to say without just kind of challenging it. And you don't have to be ugly about it. You just need to lift your hand up and say, I don't think I understand what you mean. And really, really that says, I don't think I agree with what you said. Make them explain it. And, and I came up with this thing, this sandwich construction in there, you know. And after a while, you recognize that when you learn to open up your mouth, people re will respect what you say. So there's a sandwich construction in this chapter, 1 Corinthians 12, 13, 14, where actually Paul was addressing the real central problem in the church. And it was folk in chapter 14 that he was really trying to address. He was trying to tell them that you're out of order. You're unruly, you're disobedient, and you're out of order. He was trying to tell the church that y'all get around and speak in tongues and make everybody sound like they don't know what they're talking about. And the, you got big eyes and you got little U's, you got folk that, you know, because the ones who can speak in tongue are really spiritual. Y'all can talk back to me. I ain't, I ain't scared. You don't have to be scared. I ain't scared. The, the ones who speak in tongues are really spiritual. They belong in this camp. And the ones who have never spoken in tongues need to just sit down and be on this side and hush up. And I didn't like what that sounded like because, because if the Bible is true, and, and I was a mathematical kind of person, so I was operating by reason and deduction, and I said that if you got the Holy Ghost and I got the Holy Ghost, then, then, then wait a minute. Now, God, you tell me what you mean, that this group is more special than that group. That's the kind of stuff that brings division in the church. That's the kind of stuff that messes up the map and, and starts to, y'all don't hear me in here. There's some people that celebrate and say, Pastor, preach right now because I've been feeling like that for a long time. And it's keeping folk out of the church saying that you, you, you make me speak in tongues. You make me do this kind of thing. Paul would say, I want all of you to speak in tongues, but I realize that all of you won't speak in tongues. It doesn't matter like that. And he said, you've got to stop persecuting. This was chapter 14. He was saying, you've got to stop persecuting folks who, who don't have that same experience of speaking in tongues and praying in tongues. Stop persecuting those folks because, in fact, most of y'all ain't speaking in tongues with the right spirit in the first place that you want to do it to be seen you want to do it to be heard you want folk to know how spiritual you really are and you're doing this kind of thing when it's out of order in the service because if there's a tongue spoken this is chapter 14 if there's a tongue spoken in church in the midst of it it's going to confuse those who don't speak in tongues because they're other languages and I would rather that you would prophesy in a language that everybody could understand rather than speak in tongues and let people think that you're spiritual but he said at the same time that, but I speak in tongues. And so you got to rhyme all that together. You got to come together and say that, wait, I'm a little confused. Paul is saying, don't do it out of order, but yes, do it. And then, you know what, when I go back to that, that's one bread. That's one piece of bread. Y'all say that with me. That's one piece of bread. Then the other piece of bread is 1 Corinthians chapter 12 where, where Paul was really saying that, that I'm going to explain these gifts to you so that you understand something about these gifts. Because a lot of it is because of our lack of understanding. We are destroyed because of our lack of knowledge. That we don't understand some things in the body of Christ and then we go forth as if we understand and we're actually dangerous because we don't necessarily understand what we're, what we're trying to tell and teach somebody else. So get some understanding and all that getting, get some understanding. But between the two pieces of bread, how many folk know that, yes, we like bread, but it's the meat we're after. 
So he inserted chapter 13 in the middle of it just to let you know that though you speak with the tongue of men and angels, he was trying to help somebody to understand. He said, though you can speak on an earthly language and though you can speak heavenly language, I mean, you're real equipped. You are, you are cream of the crop in terms of your Christianity, but have not love. You are like a, tang, a clanging cymbal. You're just making a lot of noise. And Paul was trying to tell them, he said, and you loud, but you're wrong. And we got to a place where, we got to a place in church where, where we're loud. We want to be seen. We're like Pharisees. We want to be heard. We want to outpray the next one. When we realize that, you know, I'm going to tell you what, Sister Martha is doing such a, Excellent job. I, I pray I'll give you this prop here. She's doing such an excellent job managing us, administering our prayer line. We get there, and I'm so excited about that prayer line because you know what? Some people get on there, and you know what? I, I'm going to be honest with you. I ain't going to be transparent. Sometimes I go, oh, Lord, it's 630, it's 633, and when I realize who's praying for that day, I go like, oh, Lord, I know I'm going to miss that because three minutes, and they're done. Some people be there for 15 minutes. You can be late, and it be 15 minutes and 12 minutes, they'll be out there. But you, get, you mess around with some folk, and three minutes, they're done. And you get that little music. Y'all ever got that before? You get that little music that comes on, that, and you say, well, did I miss it? I couldn't have missed it. It's only three minutes in. But there's some folk that get on that line and pray and pray quick and get it done and say, y'all have a nice day. Click, and you, call, you can call in late if you want to. But you know what? God heard that three-minute prayer just like he hears a 30-minute prayer because God ain't into big eyes and big you, little you's. God is saying this, that guess what? If the moment they open their mouth, I, just, I answered the prayer. You asked you, you ask Daniel when he dealt with the angel. He said, the moment you set your heart, y'all say this with me, set your heart. The moment you open your mouth to pray, the first step you took, before you even opened your mouth, I knew what you were going to say. So you just did that for you, but I heard you before you even opened up your mouth. And I sent a yes to your answer right then. Before you got through your prayer, your prayer was even answered. Because God is not into big eyes and little U's. Oh my gosh. And he says that I hear the one who stumbles over their words because guess what? God didn't pick all the best people, the cream of the crop, you see. Sometimes the cream of the crop stutters. That was Moses. Sometimes the cream of the crop doesn't have all the big words and big fancy words and a lot of education and all they can say is, Lord, help. And God, get a, and God heard, Lord, help, and he filled in the rest of the prayer as if it had been prayed for 30 minutes. Sometimes you don't have time to pray eloquently. Sometimes you don't have, to, you don't have the time to, to, to actually uh, 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 applaud God and say, God of creation, Lord of heaven, the God who lifted the sun in the sky and suspends the sun, the God who parted the Red Sea when the Israelites were trying to go, the God whom I love, the God whom I serve, and the God who is a dignitary, the God who is high sits high and looks low the God who forgives us all of our sins the God and you haven't asked the request yet a lot of people don't know how to do all of that right there but they mean it in their heart and God said I don't look at the outer appearance what's coming out of the mouth because I know what the substance is in the heart so I'm proud of the folks that would get on there and go like I'm scared but I'm gonna say this prayer right quick and get this thing over. And God is as happy with you as you can just about imagine. Because you took the risk. You trusted him. Let me spend this last couple of minutes before we commune and help you understand something. He says, now concerning spiritual gifts, brother, and I do not want you to be ignorant because that's what was going on in the Corinthian church. They were ignorant, and sometimes we, and ignorant isn't a bad word, that means we lack the knowledge. 
In our community, ignorant means is a fighting word, but it's not a fighting word. It just means that we lack knowledge. And Paul says that if I give you the knowledge, then you'll no longer be ignorant. And he says this. He said, you know that you were Gentiles carried away by those dumb idols. That's what the problem was in the first place. He said, however you were led. He said, therefore, I make known to you that no one speaking by the Spirit of God calls Jesus a curse, and no one can say that Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. If you can say that Jesus is the Lord, if you can say that Jesus is Lord and mean that with your heart, he's saying it's that same Holy Spirit in you, that the Spirit, that same Holy Spirit that's got people doing all kinds of incredible things. And then he goes on and makes, he says this, he said, he said, there are diversities of gifts. That diversity means that they're different. They're different gifts. He said, there are diversities of gifts. He said, but look at this, but the same spirit. Would y'all say this with me? Same spirit. He said, there are differences of ministries, but the same Lord. A lot of times one ministry looks bigger than the next ministry, but it's not bigger in fact, because guess what? It's the same Lord. It's the same spirit. It's the same power that's fueling this one. You, you put petrol in your car, your car might go 100 miles an hour or your car might only go uh, 10 miles an hour, but if it doesn't have petrol in it, it won't go nowhere. The same spirit, the same power that's in the midst of it. You might ride in comfort or you might ride in something that bumps and jumps and, and, and makes a whole lot of noise, but, but it doesn't matter. If you get to get to, from point A to point B, you know better than the next person that's trying to get there because it wasn't about the ride, it was about the arrival. He says this, that he said there are differences of ministries, but the same Lord. And he said there are diversities of activities, but it is the same God who works all in all. But look at this. This is verse 7. This is where I get my preach on for just two seconds. He said, but the manifestation of the Spirit is given to each one for the profit of all. I need to tell you something real quick, then I'm going to get out your way. He said, but the manifestation of the Spirit. You can't just call those who speak in tongues the ones who are filled with the Spirit. Because there are too many diversities of gifts with the same Lord and with the same Spirit. It's the same Spirit that is the one who helps people along the way. That missionary has the same Spirit as the one he was trying to tell them, Paul was trying to teach them, that this myth is the missionary who just helps folks, but you never hear them open up their mouths. The one who gets in the kitchen and cooks for somebody who's in need of, of, of just a healing touch of a meal is operated by the same spirit as the one who can go out and speak a foreign language to somebody that does not know except they would hear it in their own language oh my god y'all hear me same spirit same god in all operating in all so the manifestation is different he said i might look like something different but it's still me And Paul was telling this congregation in Corinthians, he said, listen, I I need y'all to stop being loud and wrong. Because you're ostracizing so many that folk don't feel comfortable to use their gifts. Because you made it sound like you made it feel like my little old gift doesn't measure to this big old one right here. And there's no such thing as big O or little O when it's the same spirit. That each one of us is just as critical. Each one of us is just as necessary. When you read the rest rest of this, you know, I can rhyme with this. Because, you know, I don't, you know, a tooth isn't but a little thing in your body. You read the rest of this, it'll say, you know, some folks would rather be a hand than be a foot. Some folks would rather be an arm than be a hand. Some folks would say, no, I want to be the leg. No, I, I need to be the torso. I need to be the heart. But, but let me say this to you. Get a toothache. And the whole body will go to hurting. And until you put some, until there's some soothe on that, stub your big toe. And the whole body will go into writhing pain. Y'all hear what I'm saying? 
God was telling us, guess what? We need each other. And he was trying to help them to understand that I need y'all to recognize that when you're in the company of those who are filled by my spirit, you're in the company of me. He was trying to help them to understand that, you know, that, that I need you. What do we do with this? I need you to start treating people right because I can't dispense my power among folk who can't get along with one another because they can't get along with one another because they're looking up and down on each other. When the fact of the matter is, you know, I want to tell you, stop feeling so bad because you think you're not as big as the next person. You're just as big because it's same spirit. You're just as powerful because it's the same God. Let us stop judging one another and try, to, and try to reason with one another and recognize, hallelujah. And guess what? When you come into the presence of somebody, can you practice this for me? Can you come into the presence of somebody and not look at them anymore and just see Jesus? Hallelujah. When you come into the presence of the saints and look, I, I ought to greet my brother, I ought to greet my sister as if I just walked upon Jesus. Because Jesus is on board. Jesus is alive and well on the inside. Amen. That guess what? And when, when your Jesus meets my Jesus, you might, be, you might be down, but my Jesus might be up. And so when your Jesus comes to my Jesus, we ought to get on level ground together. Amen. I can encourage you and you can encourage me that the Lord can do some mighty and powerful things. And God said in this chapter here that when I begin to see all of us getting together like a well-oiled machine, then folks are going to look out in the midst of us and begin to see. I don't understand what's going on in the midst, but I see something beautiful. I see something glorious. Would you do this for me? Would you look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I see you in the future. Hallelujah. Look at it. I see you in the future. Hallelujah. It doesn't matter where you are right now because that's not where you're going. Where you are is just a station in your life. But I'm looking at you way down the line. I'm not looking at Hugh. I'm looking at Jesus. Hallelujah. Because wherever Hugh is right now, God can make something uh, marvelous out of Hugh. You might think you're something, but where you're on your way to right now, God is saying, I got more for in you. I got better for you. I can do more with you. Amen. And every one of us needs to carry around that kind, kind of sense that really says this, that, that each one of us together can do more than every one of us apart, that we are one team together, that we are one body together, that there are diversities of spirits, uh, diversities of gifts, but same spirit that we need to understand, hallelujah, that you're just as valuable as I am. Look at somebody and see the value of Jesus in their life and on their life. Stop worrying about the way they talk and stop worrying about the way they walk. Stop looking about what clothes they have on. That has to do with their assignment. It doesn't have to do with their composition because their composition is filled up with the Holy Ghost and that same Holy Ghost who can heal, that same Holy Ghost who can deliver, that same Holy Ghost who can set free, that same Holy Ghost who can make something out of nothing, y'all hear me, is in me, is in you and is in you and is in you and rise up hallelujah and start using your gift don't let lack consume you God says stand up and be counted hey That's why we got to look at each other and say that, you know what, you're feeling a little sick. That sickness can't stay in you. You're too valuable for that. Would you look at somebody and just tell somebody, you're too valuable for that. Oh, come on, somebody. We got to go home and tell our children, parents. We got to go home and tell our young folks, our grandchildren, you can't live like that. That spirit can't stay on you. You're too valuable for that. God wants to use you. God got something in you. You know, you don't have to cuss back at somebody who cusses. Just tell them. Your mouth is too much, is worth too much for that.
Preach, I'm gonna close the book so y'all know I'm finished. Preach, pastor. Put that bottle down. You tearing up your vessel. Put that cigarette down. You tearing up them lungs and God got something to say with your lungs. Put those drugs away. It's destroying your body and God said, I got use for you in my kingdom or else I would never have put you in here. You don't have to cuss them out, raise them up. Edify them, lift them up and tell them that they're valuable. You got too much in you to be living the way that you live. And church, I purposely did it. I know I've been loud, but I'm not loud and wrong. We got to be loud, but we can't be wrong. We can't promote something that really isn't so. We got to love people with the love of Jesus Christ. Can we do it? Can we look upon others? Can we, can we adjust our, our glasses? Can we, can we fine tune and be able to see past the hurts and pe past the pain, see past the frustrations, see past the foolishness and see into the heart and be able to say that there's value on the inside and I'm gonna work with you until you get what's on the inside to come reflect on the outside. Hey! What, if anything, is the church for? That's what we're here for. We're not here to make judgment on folk. If you mess up, fess up. Straighten up. And let us help fix you up. Pick you up. We're loud, but we're right. How many folk can be loud for Jesus right now? I want you to get loud for him right now. Wherever you are, get loud for him. Say, Lord, I'm going to get loud for you. Hallelujah. Hey! I'm going to get loud for you, Lord God. But I'm going to get loud with your word. I'm going to get loud with your love. I'm going to get loud about your deliverance. I'm going to get loud about your healing. I'm going to get loud about your joy. I'm going to get loud about your encouragement. I'm going to get loud, hallelujah, about your peace. I'm going to get loud about your power. Somebody ought to get loud right now. Somebody ought to get loud and say, he is. My Jehovah Shalom. My Jehovah Nisi. My bridge over troubled water. He is my bread when I'm hungry. He is my provider. He is my healer. He is my soldier. He is my Lord. He is my testimony. He is my testament. He is. Hey! Yes, he is. Oh, yes, he is. Oh, yes, he is. Glory be to God. Y'all ready to commune? Let us commune together. Does everybody have a communion set? Everybody have their communion sets? Help the brother out. Hallelujah. And you know, I want to give a shout out. And this isn't a shout out because it's my son and my daughter-in-law for Sunday school, amen, this morning. But I want to give a shout out to Miss Tammy because she's working tireless to make our young adults stand up, push forward. Amen. Hallelujah. And so if she taps you on the shoulder and say, hey, we need, I need you to get loud. But get loud with the word yes.
I'll do it. Because the Lord is moving in power. Thank you, Miss Tammy, for your passion for, amen, getting the word of God out. And then I want to say thank you to them. Our young adults did an excellent job, and they're going to be teaching this month. Amen. I want y'all to sign on to Sunday school. Don't just be, don't sit around and go, I ain't going to sign. If you don't know how to do it, call us. Y'all call us for everything else. Hallelujah. I love you. You got your communion sets? Praise the Lord. My bread came right out that time. song for me. Anything. Speak to my heart. Hallelujah. Holy Spirit. Message of love to encourage me. Of a more the dark night will fade away speak to my heart oh my speak, speak to my heart, heart holy spirit message of love love to, to encourage me. me lifting my heart from the snare how you love me and care for me speak to my heart hallelujah does everyone have a communion set let us stand together let me just pray over this element Father, we thank you right now, Lord God, for this opportunity for us to remember you in this way, that this bread represents your body and this wine represents your blood that was shed for the remission of sins. And we thank you for that, God. We bless you, Lord, for your goodness and for your favor. Now, God, as we ask, as we partake of this, Lord God, we don't want to come wrong. We want to be loud, but we don't want to be wrong. So clean our hearts right now, Lord God. Cause us to cast away any negativity that exists on the inside. Because we really want to spend time with you. And the two, quite frankly, just don't mix. Clean us. We repent of our sins. We endeavor to do things your way and not our way. And we thank you, Lord God, for loving us enough to keep covenant with us. We bless these elements now in the name of Jesus. Amen. And the Bible says that on the night in which Jesus was betrayed, he, he took bread and he broke it and he blessed it. And he said, take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. Let us eat of the bread together. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup and he reminded his disciples, he said, this is the new covenant in my blood. I won't drink henceforth of the fruit of this vine until that day I drink it new with you in my father's kingdom. Until then, until then, drink ye all of it. Let us drink together. somebody would say I just drank healing to my body I just drank deliverance over my situation I just drank joy into my heart hallelujah I just drank freedom hallelujah to be what God desires for me to be I am whole now in the name of Jesus hallelujah and so I want you to look at your neighbor and point right at him and say prosper in the name of Jesus prosper hallelujah prosper in the name of prosper in the name of Jesus, prosper. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. While we're standing, would you do this before we 
commit to close on today. I want to pray for a soul that right now is struggling with their sense of salvation, with their, with their sense of who God is, struggling with obedience to Christ. I want to pray for someone who just flat out rejects that God exists. And I want us to recognize that in this prayer, in this quick prayer time, that we got power to change those individuals around, to make them consider maybe there is something to what they talk about. Maybe if I try, we're, we're gonna pray for someone right now to just reach up and say, God, I'm reaching up, but if you would reach down and make yourself known to me. God, I wanna receive you. There's a hole in my heart that I know that only you can fix. And I've been running away from you. And we want to pray for that individual, those individuals, anyone who thinks like that right now, that they would release themselves to an able, capable, loving master who cares for them. And so, Father, in the precious name of Jesus, we talked about individuals right now that don't know you for the pardon of their sins. But, but we want them to shout out to you right now, Lord God. We don't want them to quietly walk away, but we want them to be loud in your face and say, God, if you're real, show yourself strong in my life. I want to receive you. And we want them to cry out to you like the Israelites cried out and you sent deliverance, send deliverance to their lives even now in the name of Jesus. Lord God, cause them to know this for sure, that if they confess with their mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in their heart that God raised him from the dead, that they shall be saved, hallelujah, rescued from danger, delivered from oppression, hallelujah, made whole, preserved until you're coming again, healed, hallelujah, from affliction. Help them to know you and help them to grow in you. And we thank you even now, Lord God, for the power of this prayer that has released someone from the depths of hell. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. If that was you that we prayed for, we say this. Contact us on our website, www.haskellheightsfbc.com. Or you can reach us on our church web app. Go to your mobile app store and download the name of our church, Haskell Heights First Baptist Church. And, and we contact us, push to connect with us, push to contact us, just call us, get in touch with us, but we want to help you along your journey. We're praying for you, and we want you to know that this is a loving house, and we want to love on you, just like they loved on me. When I came here, they loved on me, and I couldn't let go. Hallelujah. So we bless God for you. Welcome into the family of God. Hallelujah. Would you stretch arms to your neighbor? Just. Hallelujah. Father, in the precious name of Jesus, cover and keep my brother, cover and keep my sister. Guard over all the affairs of their lives. Guide them according to your light. Give them peace. Be power for them. Protect them in everything they place that they go. Provide for their every need according to your riches and glory. Lord God, I pray that you would give them a sense of their purpose right now and be productive in everything that they do. Prosper them in all of their ways. And now may the grace and favor of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ rest, rule, and abide with them henceforth now and forevermore. Let the redeemed of the Lord say amen, amen, amen. God bless you. We love you. May the Lord prosper in you. Worship our King. May you have a wonderful day. Just fade away. Speak to my heart, Lord. Speak to my heart.